solving problems with conservation of energy and conservation of momentum. So in this video, we're going to look at problems where you have to use both conservation ideas, conservation of energy and conservation of momentum. So usually the way that this pans out is that during the problem, there's some kind of event where conservation of momentum applies. So maybe a collision or something like that, or a recoil. And in another part of the problem, um, maybe you can call it another phase of the problem, energy is conserved and you'll use energy conservation for that. So often the key to solving problems like this is that you have to figure out in what part is momentum conserved and in what part is energy conserved. Okay, and I'll show you an example. So let's say we have a big sheet of ice with a hill on one side over there on the right. And then let's say we have two blocks sitting on the ice. Um, one of the blocks is at rest and the other block is moving toward it. Um, the moving block, let's give it a mass of two kilograms. The stationary block, let's give it a mass of three kilograms. And the moving block, let's make it move at 10 meters per second to the right. Now there's no friction, um, so we don't have to worry about that. Uh, so the block is going to hit the other block. And in this problem, let's say that they stick together after the impact. So it's a completely inelastic collision. Um, and I want to know the final height or the maximum height that those two combined blocks will reach when they get to that hill. Because right? those two blocks are going to go off, speeding along to the right, and they're going to go up the hill, and eventually they'll get to their maximum height and they'll stop and then they'll slide back down. So I'm going to draw this, this as three different pictures. I'm going to draw it before, I'm going to draw it immediately after the collision, and then I'm going to draw it when it reaches its maximum height. Okay. Um, so going from the first picture to the second picture, that's a collision. If the problem was just that part, we could just use conservation of momentum. Going from the second picture to the third picture, that is an energy conservation problem. So what we'll do is we'll use momentum conservation to go from the first part to the second part, and then energy conservation to go from the second part to the third part. So let's try it out. Let's use momentum conservation to go from the first to the second. So the total momentum in the first picture, well, that's just the momentum of the moving block. The stationary block has no momentum. And that has to equal the momentum at the end. And at the end, well, let's see, we have the two blocks are combined for a total mass of five kilograms. And so we can figure out how fast the blocks are moving immediately after the collision. Okay, then we can use energy conservation. Now this is a closed system. There's no friction. There's nothing coming in to add or remove energy from the system. So we can use energy conservation at the beginning it only has kinetic energy. And at the end, when it reaches that maximum height, it won't be moving, so it will only have potential energy at the end. And if we use that idea, we can solve for the height that it has at the end. All right, so there we go. We used momentum conservation and kinetic energy conservation, or excuse me, and energy conservation to get to the answer. Let's look at one other example. And this example is often called a uh, ballistic pendulum. It's a effective way for measuring the velocities of bullets, but let's not worry about that right now. Um, let's say we have a bullet and it's headed toward a pendulum made out of clay. So like, a, let's imagine just a big ball of clay hanging from a string. So the bullet is gonna come in and the bullet is gonna have a certain mass. Let's make it 0 0.0500 kilograms. And let's make the bullet move at 50 meters per second going to strike that clay and let's say that initially the clay is not moving just dangling there uh, and the clay is going to have a mass of two kilograms I want to know when the bullet hits the clay and the bullet's going to embed itself in the clay by the way but the clay is going to swing upward um, I want to know how fast is the clay going to be moving when it's one meter higher than its starting position it's pretty similar. We've got the collision that happens. The bullet hits the clay. That's the momentum conservation part. And then 
the clay is going to swing upward, and in that swing, we're going to ignore air resistance. Uh, so in that swing, no energy is lost, no energy is added, so we can use energy conservation to figure out the final velocity when it's one meter above the ground. And I'll go ahead and write that out, write out the solution, and we can figure out how fast the bullet and the clay will be moving when they're both a meter above their starting position. There are many different ways that these problems can appear, uh, so you got to be a little clever sometimes, you got to think about it, but keep in mind, the usual way to attack it is to split it up into a part where momentum is conserved and split it into another part where energy is conserved, and then apply each idea during the part where it applies.